Grew up in Manson, Iowa. And I graduated from high school in 1972 and joined the Navy. And uh, played in the Navy band in San Diego and San Francisco and then got out. <clears throat> Went to music school in Boston. Came back in the Navy in 1978. Got the job at the Naval Academy Band in 1979. And, uh, and I've, so I've been in Annapolis since 1979. I was in the Naval Academy Band for 25 years as a guitar player. I played in Electric Brigade. Okay. Um, and then as I got promoted, I took an office job and did public affairs and played in the big band and combos at the Admiral's house. And uh, I apprenticed as a luthier in 1979, <clears throat> right when I got here at Fowler Music Service, which I don't believe exists anymore, but Steve Fowler was a band instrument repairman and very, very good repair guy. And um, he took me under his wing, taught me how to do this. When I retired from the Navy in 2004, I started repairing guitars full time and playing gigs. How did you get started working on guitars? Well, I just touched on that, but. Um, when I was young, I decided it would be smart to learn to know how to do something besides just play. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I tried electronic repair and I didn't really like that. And um, the obvious thing that most players do is teach. I didn't like the revolving door of beginning guitar students. You know, there's a few who are motivated and um, stick with it and are a joy to teach but to me most of, most of the time they'd come for about three lessons and realize it was work and they'd stop practicing and their parents would keep bringing them and I didn't like it so um, I got the opportunity to learn how to work on guitars and I like it I liked it and I seemed to have an aptitude for it so I just stuck with it us a little bit about your mentor? Steve, my uh, repair mentor? Yeah, yeah. Steve Fowler, he was a clarinet player in the Naval Academy Band, and I believe he's from Illinois. And I'm not sure where he learned, but he was a very good band instrument repairman. He, um, you know, so he, he's a reed player, so he specialized in clarinets and saxophones and flutes and things. And, and, but he had a full service shop, and um, he needed somebody to do guitar, so he asked me if I wanted to learn. And he, I don't believe he was a skilled luthier. I believe that he was read the books that were available at the time and he had kind of a mechanical logic whereas it didn't matter what he was working on it could be working on his car or the plumbing in his house or whatever he had a knack for seeing what a problem was and being able to pull from the information he had at hand and figure out how to fix something. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I came away from him with was instead of just learning, well, this is how you fix this, he taught me how to diagnose a problem and there's uh, the old saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So you look at every individual repair and decide what is the best approach and sometimes I will have never fixed that particular thing before so you have to figure out how are you going to repair it.
but the first guitars I built were built out of parts. So uh, this was before the internet, but there were companies in California, primarily Fender style guitars that bolt together. So uh, you buy a, a Stratocaster style neck and a Strat body and you buy all the parts and generally you have to drill the holes and, and everything and learn how to wire it and etc, etc, etc. And after doing that a few times, it isn't that much of a stretch to go on to make your own bodies and necks and put them together. This guitar that I'm holding, I built for my grandson. And what it is, is a hollow body. It's um, zebra wood, neck and body, with a maple cap. And technically, it's a solid body guitar, but I routed everything out except <coughs> for right to the bridge, <coughs> excuse me, just past the bridge. So everything here is solid, everything else is hollow. Um, the, I, I, I was concerned that the beautiful zebra wood, when you're playing the guitar, nobody can see it. So I made all the fixtures, the tailpiece, the pick guard, the pickup rings, um, they're all made out of zebra wood. This this carved tail piece here is a stylized. Um, uh, it's my initials. It's a J and whatever. yeah, J C. And uh, it's got PAF style pickups. Um, it's got nice locking tuners. I made the. This is out of brass. It's got a brass bridge. The, this part of the tailpiece and the, and the um, jack plate are brass, and I, I made them. Building a guitar is easier than repairing because building, once you've figured out, you can set up jigs for your tools and you can knock them out like a factory if you're going to do that. Whereas repairing, I feel like, um, you know, there's. Some things you see over and over again and it become routine as how you repair it, but there's a lot of times that it's, it's uh, a challenge to figure out how to go about doing any, any, a given repair. But that's also, you know, take, you have to take into consideration that in the meantime, I'm working on other things, too. I think if you're going to make money as a guitar builder, you have to think big. You can't think small unless you build an exceptional instrument and you build a couple of them a year and you sell them for a lot of money. So, um, I just decided many years ago that I do enjoy building guitars. Um, but mostly, um, most of the ones I've built, I've either kept myself or I've given them to family members or I've sold some, but they've all been pre-sold. So, but I've been making money. You know, when, all, when all was said and done, when I finished with it, if I take into consideration the time that I spend in it, not that I didn't make any money, I made I sold them for more than it cost me to make them, but I'm not sure that that was the best um, use of my time. Mm -hmm. Like I could have made more money if I just all the time that I spent building that guitar, if I had spent it repairing hour for hour, I made more money repairing than I did building. However, when it's all said and done, it feels really good to have built an instrument and and get it in the hands of a player who loves it. Or I play it myself. Mm -hmm. It feels good to take a, something created and then take it to a gig and create more with it.